Hello guys, so today we are going to talk about Cube Proxy and how exactly it helps in routing and all of the traffic for services in Kubernetes and Cube Proxy can run in various modes and we'll be talking about specifically IP tables mode because that's the default mode that comes with Kubernetes. So the contents of this video would be that we'll see what a service is and what an endpoint is just on a high level and then we'll see like uh, what is Cube Proxy and then we'll see the details at how exactly Cube Proxy works in IP table mode. So this is how we declare a service and whenever we create a service an endpoint object is also created along with it. So let's look at the details of this declaration. So we have a name here. So the name is node app service, right? And the kind was service, right? Because it's service object. And then uh, we are just declaring a node port type of a service. And then we declare the selector, right? Selector tells that how the pods should be selected and right? what pods should be selected. So all the pods which have the labels with app name and node app as the labels. So those would be selected. And then port tells to which target ports uh, like the request should go to and what is the port of the service and then it tells the node port right what is uh, the port on the node it needs to use so when as i said as when we create a service an endpoint object is created along with it so when we look at the endpoint object like uh, if you list on the endpoints you will see like this mapping there so here like if i had three pods that were running that were matching so endpoint keeps the track of uh, those pods right so endpoint is the object that keeps the real mapping of the pod right which pods uh, it maps to the service maps to and the port information is also present here so again so the service only declares how the selector should be the real information of what all nodes and all should be selected is uh, in the endpoints. So we have looked at uh, what NAT and what IP tables are, and we've also seen what services are and what endpoint objects are, right? Um, so let's look at the architecture because we are trying to understand what Kube proxy is and what role does it play. So in a Kubernetes, we have like the worker node, which is on the right here. You see these three nodes, right? And then we have a master node in high availability, uh, Kubernetes cluster we would have multiple master nodes also so the master nodes consist of the control plane which has things like API server HCD scheduler and all that stuff and the worker nodes they just have kubelet and kube proxy so kube proxy which is running on the worker nodes is the actual Kubernetes component that's, that does all the routing and all right so kube proxy keeps track of all the services and all the endpoint objects and whenever it any of the endpoint objects change or the service mappings change it would pull all of the information and pass it on to the node on which it is running and the node then uses ip tables to route the traffic to to one of the other nodes uh, to one of the other pods that is backing the service so whenever we create a cluster ip service right uh, an IP, a virtual IP address is picked from the uh, pool of IP addresses. So a, the API server would assign a virtual IP address to the service. So this is a very important slide because this explains how exactly the Kube proxy does the, does the traffic routing and all, right? So Kube proxy watches the Kubernetes control plane for all the service and endpoints. Whenever any service or endpoint objects they change, Kube proxy will pull that information and for each service it installs the IP table rules on the node. So nodes have the IP table rules which consists of like various tables and chains. So uh, for each service a different IP table rule is installed and for each endpoint object like means uh, all the port, pods which are uh, backed by the endpoint for each of those pods, a rule is added within the IP table. Now, suppose you have uh, one node that is in like one pod that is running in the node and it need it hits a service and the service is backed by three other pods, right? So all, the rules for all the three other pods would be added in the IP table. So Kube proxy 
basically it gets all the information from api server and then it passes all that information in the ip tables and the client which is running on the node which is a pod right tries to connect to the cluster ip which is the ip address of the server so ip tables would look at that information and it also knows that what are the backend pods corresponding to that service because that information is within the endpoint and that is also persisted within the ip tables so it would add that information to the ip tables and it would select the one of those pods based on the information and route the traffic to it so this is how the load balancing is also done so uh, the way the rules look like for the pods are so we say that okay like pod one is your client and on the right side are your are your other pods that back the service so when your pod one tries to contact the service so this is how like i'm not just showing the exact rules this is uh, just like an annotation which helps us understand how it will work right so uh, the request comes so ip table sees okay it is for service one and now the first probability of routing it to pod one right it says is 33 percent so only one of the three requests would be would be sent to 10.0.3.4 which is the first pod so if like so two-third of the request would not go in so the two-third of the requests that don't follow this rule would go to the next rule so the next rule it says okay after it is two-third it will say 50 percent of those two-thirds uh, should go to 10.0.3.5 and out of the remaining which is one third would be left they should go to the pod which is 10.0.3.6 right so again this is how you can understand like this is how the load balancing and all work all the information is persisted within the ip tables of the node itself and here we're just talking about the specific ip tables mode in which kube proxy is working there are other modes also in which you can run kube proxy by the way, if you're liking the video so far, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button because it motivates. So let's look at an actual example. So I will be deploying uh, this uh, this service. Uh, so like first I have a deployment which consists of Nginx deployment which has three replicas and all. So they don't have any service associated with it. So this, this deployment deploys like three pods. I have another deployment which runs like five pods. And they are backed by a service and this is the service so if you see this is a selector which is node app and uh, which matches the selector which is node app right and that is why the service would be applied uh, for these parts so let's look at the kubernetes nodes now so here is my cluster so i would just say clusterless so i'm running k3s to run my server and this is k3d as a client like which makes it easy to know about the server about the cluster and all so the cluster has one server which is the one master node and it has three agents which is three worker nodes and all. so if i say docker es so k3s uses docker to con to create these uh, uh nodes and all so these are the three agent nodes so i will log on to maybe the first agent node and see like the ip tables and all and this is the first server node, right so here it also says like this server and all so let's see all this stuff so cube cuttle get all so this will say all the things that are running within kubernetes so first we see three pods that are running which were nginx like they are not read they are independent other one are five which are backed by a service which is node app uh, with which are again running for node app deployment so these are the five pods and then they're backed by a service which is this service node app service and the ip is 226 like 10.43.49.226 so we'll see a rule for 226 within the ip tables and now if we log on to one of the uh, one of the nodes right so let's say we take the first one so we say docker p uh, minus so we are now within the node and we will list the ip tables uh 
within that node right so when we list all of these tables so the first like the chain and the table and all they start from the top so the interesting like there are quite a number of rules right the interesting for one for us is uh, like the cube services which contains rules for each and every service so there are some services that belong to us and certain which don't so the one was later 226 right so this is the one 2 226 uh it was our service and we say it maps also to node app service right and uh, we see like uh, the further chain that for which is corresponding to this name so with this name if we scroll down there is a further list of rules so if you see here these are the further set of rules here right and then if on the right if you see probability like the first is like if the probability is 0.21 point 20 then goes to the first pod and all so since like this is running on my on my local right uh, and uh, we don't see the proper pod ids and all but uh, if you're running in an actual cluster and all like we're using vms where there are no shared namespaces you would see those ip addresses and you see like here we have the five set of rules one for each pod now we will reduce the number of replicas from five to three and we should also see accordingly that uh, the rules number of rules should change so i will apply the new file so to so it says the new deployment is configured and if i say q get all so you see it is terminating the last two pods uh, let's wait for it to be terminated so our nodes number of uh, pods have been reduced to number of three now when we list the services again let's go to the one which we had for this service right which is qqsx right we remember the ip address was two to six and earlier like we had five number of rules and now the number of rules are just three so this is how exactly uh, the IQ proxy listen on to the services and endpoints and based on the number of nodes and the IP address of the pods and all it adds the rules into the IP tables of the node and whenever traffic passes through the nodes uh, the node uh, make the nodes based on the IP table rules uh, routes the traffic accordingly so if you like the full video please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button because it motivates me a lot to make more more such videos